Airbus has long been one part of the dominant duopoly with Boeing in the commercial aircraft market. As a major manufacturer of narrow-body and wide-body commercial aircraft, it has competed directly with Boeing since the 1970s. But what makes Airbus successful where so many others have failed? Here are 10 interesting things about the plane maker that you may not have known. Number 10. Airbus started as a collaboration between European countries. Boeing was one of the world's first aircraft manufacturers, starting over a hundred years ago as a military supplier during the First World War and then expanding into mail services. Airbus, however, was formed in 1970 as a consortium, with several European manufacturers coming together to take on the larger US manufacturers, which at that time included Lockheed and McDonnell Douglas, as well as Boeing. The company's first aircraft, the A300, was created to compete directly with Boeing's popular jets. It was a true Europe-wide effort, with France leading construction of the cockpit and central fuselage, wings manufactured in the UK, other fuselage sections made in West Germany, flaps and spoilers made in Holland, and the tailplane built in Spain. This collaboration continues today. Number 9. Airbus has entered the regional market with the A220. In most markets, Airbus and Boeing are closely matched. However, Airbus has set itself apart in the smaller aircraft market. The A318 and A319, as the smallest members of the A320 family, offered a similar capacity to Boeing's smallest 737 models up to the next generation series. Boeing has moved larger with the 737 MAX. Conversely, Airbus has gone further into the 100 to 150 seat market with the A220, a result of its acquisition of the Bombardier C Series in 2018. The smaller CS100 became the A220 100 and the larger CS300 the A220 300. Boeing made a similar move to smaller aircraft when it rebranded the MD95 as the Boeing 717 after its merger with McDonnell Douglas. However, the 717 has been out of production since 2006. The A220 has seen particular success during the slowdown of 2020 and into 2021. With its lower capacity and excellent efficiency, it has been put back into service much faster than other aircraft. To learn more about the A220 and how it's changing Airbus's standing, check out our previous video, The Pandemic Winner – The Rise of the Airbus A220. Number 8. Airbus has built the largest ever commercial aircraft. This is one fact we all know, but it's worth reinforcing its significance. Airbus conceived the A380 as a competitor to the popular Boeing 747, the only manufacturer to attempt to take on the Queen of the Skies. Boeing had considered two full-length decks for the 747 but could not make it work under safety requirements. Airbus was able to achieve two full decks and offered a typical three-class capacity of 544. It could have gone up to 868 in an all-economy layout. For comparison, the 747-8 offers a typical three-class capacity of 467. While it has not been as successful as hoped, the A380 is an amazing engineering achievement and an important aviation milestone. With a move to twin-engine aircraft and the reduced demand anticipated post-2020, it seems unlikely we'll see anyone looking to repeat an aircraft of this size in the foreseeable future. Number 7. The A300 was the first twin-engined wide-body aircraft. Speaking of engines, Boeing's first jet, the 707, had four of them. The 727 was a trijet, and the 747, of course, was a quadjet. It launched the 737 as the first two-engine aircraft in 1967. Airbus chose a different route after its formation and developed a two-engine wide body. The A300 entered service in 1974 with Air France. Boeing's first twin wide body, the 767, did not enter service until nearly a decade later in 1982. The A300 was initially intended for European flights, although there was also interest from North America. With two engines, it was more economical. And with the introduction of ETOPS rules in the 1980s, the A300 would soon operate transatlantic routes as well. Number 6. 
all Airbus cockpits are the same. Well, almost. Commonality between aircraft is an important selling point for manufacturers, enabling simpler cross-training of crew and lower cost of maintenance. Since the A320's introduction, Airbus has used an almost identical cockpit layout and handling procedures across both narrow-body and wide-body cockpits. On the A320 family, pilots can move between family aircraft. Between other types of Airbus aircraft, training is significantly reduced. This means pilots can be rapidly trained to fly new types and can switch between aircraft for greater fleet flexibility. Number 5. The A320 was the first fly-by-wire aircraft. There have been many improvements in commercial jets since their introduction in the 1950s. Today, manufacturers are focusing on efficiency improvements as well as technology and passenger comfort. But looking back, one of the most significant advances was the switch to fly-by-wire technology, which essentially replaces manual hydraulic controls with electronic controls. Airbus was the first manufacturer to introduce this on a commercial plane, launching it on the A320 in 1987. It has since used the technology on all aircraft, with Boeing rolling it out more slowly and retaining more manual overrides over computer-controlled actions than Airbus. Number 4. The A320 overtook the 737 as the most sold modern aircraft. Boeing and Airbus compete fiercely with the 737 and A320 families. Launched in 1967, Boeing has had its narrow-body family in service much longer. The A320, meanwhile, was not launched until 1987. However, even with a 20-year head start, in 2019, Airbus moved ahead in orders, 15,193 against Boeing's 15,136. With the 737 MAX problems, it's catching up on deliveries too, but things could change as the MAX returns to service and the industry picks up post-COVID. However, the title of most built aircraft ever belongs to neither Airbus nor Boeing. Douglas Aircraft achieved this with the DC-3. With several military variants, over 16,000 aircraft were built, but only 607 of these were DC-3s for airline use. Number 3. Airbus also has extensive helicopter, space, and military divisions. While we know and follow commercial aircraft developments closely, Airbus is also active in other aviation sectors. According to 2018 numbers, commercial aircraft represent 74% of revenues for the company. It also has a significant helicopter production unit. According to its own data, it's the largest helicopter producer globally with products in civilian and military use in 150 countries. And in defense, it has long been involved in military tankers and refueling, with an A310 Multi-Role Tanker Transport, or MRTT, followed by an A330 MRTT. It has also been a partner in the Eurofighter military jet development. Number 2. It operates one of the largest cargo transport aircraft in the world. Both Airbus and Boeing have large fuselage transport aircraft to move aircraft parts from suppliers around the world. Boeing's Dreamlifter, based on a 747-400 airframe, is the largest by length and wingspan. However, Airbus's Beluga XL beats it for cargo volume. The Beluga XL is based on an A330-200 airframe. Its smaller predecessor, the Beluga, is based on the A300. It offers an incredible 2,209 cubic meters of fuselage space compared to the Dreamlifter's 1,840 cubic meters. Interestingly, the impressive six-engined Antonov AN225 is also smaller in capacity. This only has cargo space of 1,300 cubic meters, but it can carry the heaviest load of any transport aircraft, with a maximum takeoff weight of 640 tons. And the number one thing you might not know about Airbus is that it plans to launch a new series of zero-emission aircraft by 2035. The move to carbon reduction and lower emissions presents many challenges and opportunities for manufacturers. Airbus made a major move in this area in 2020, announcing a project to develop hydrogen-powered zero-emission aircraft. It has proposed three aircraft designs and plans to select the first to be developed by 2025. 
This is likely to be either a regional turboprop or larger, up to 200 passenger capacity turbofan aircraft. It also has released a new concept of a blended wing aircraft. This is a big move away from traditional aircraft design and gives an improved space for hydrogen storage and distribution, as well as a whole new style of passenger cabin. Along with this, there are plans to look at the overall concept and viability of hydrogen use. This will include not just aircraft and engine technology, but its cost and the development of airport infrastructure. Another proposal in early 2021 seeks to gather support for developing Paris airports as hydrogen hubs to spur initial use. With all this, Airbus remains a key player in the commercial aviation market. While we've covered much here, what other interesting facts do you know about Airbus? Feel free to highlight more interesting details about the company and its products in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this.